Welcome to Pots, Pans, and Pioneers. Today I'm going to be making a lemonade cake. And I'm going to do the quicker version than the one from scratch. But if you want to do a cake from scratch, you just need to get any lemon cake recipe to do so. So I'm going to be using just the Betty Crocker Super Moist Lemon Cake. But I never believe them when they say it's moist because it isn't really moist unless you add pudding mix. And they say pudding's in the mix, but it doesn't, it doesn't, there's not enough pudding in the mix to make it moist. So I'm going to be adding additional pudding to the mix. So we're going to put our mix in the bowl. And I'm using the four and a half cup of the Jello lemon pudding mix. Uh, I'm not using the sugar-free, but you could if you wanted to. Uh, let's mix this together. I'm going to put the little whisk um, attachment on. Let's get that really mixed in. three eggs. These are just eggs off the farm, the room temperature. And the larger the egg that you use, the more fluffier the cake is, so it's totally up to you. We're going to use a third a cup of oil and a cup of water. And I'm just using spring water. Okay, we're going to get this mixed up. Start off slow and then speed it up. We're going to do a few seconds on high because I want to get a lot of air into this cake because I want it to be super fluffy. Okay, I'm going to flour um, two nine inch layer cakes or you could do four of the thin layer cake pans. And I know I've shown those to you in my other videos, but I'm gonna use the thicker nine inch round pans. I'm just gonna sp spray the, I mean, spray them flour and um, make sure and get a non-stick coating on the pans. And uh, we'll be back when we're all ready to have them Alright, we've got our pans here, so I'm going to take half of the mix, pour it into one, and the other half in the other one. These are nine inch rounds.
Okay. Okay, we're going to bake these for 27 minutes. Uh, it's 27 in my convection oven. It may be up to 30 minutes. Read the box of cake mix that you buy, or if you're making this from homemade, check it at about 25 minutes. Stick a toothpick in, stick a sharp knife in so that it comes out clean. That's what you want. And then you want to let them cool for five minutes and okay, then while the cake is cooling, so I'm we'll going to make the buttercream frosting for our cake. And this, I'm making enough to cover the top and the sides of the cake. Uh, we're going to put a, a, a lemon filling in the middle of it, uh, which is really going to be decadent. You're going to this is one of my husband's very favorite cakes because he loves lemon flavored so much. And when he, he likes this and lemon meringue pie mostly. And um, I make this cake a lot, which is why I decided to go with a cake mix. When I first made it for him, I did it all by scratch. Um, and then uh, it just got easier to buy everything in the box, but you could certainly make this uh, by scratch. Okay, I'm starting with a cup of butter, and I'm using real butter. I'm not using margarine. Um, this is just gonna be, a, this butter's been sitting out all day while I was at work. So it's relatively creamy. And this cake can sit out on the counter as long as you keep your home about between 70 and 75 degrees inside, this cake can set out. If you're get if the cake gets above 78 degrees, it needs to go in the refrigerator because it's going to have cream cheese and butter and even so, a little bit of milk in it. And for sure, you don't want this cake to mold on you or or to <laughs> even worse melt on you. And uh, we don't need that. So my buttercream is a little different than what you're going to find on YouTube. I love buttercream, but I like the cream cheese frosting too, so I combined mine. Uh, this is a cup of butter. I'm going to use um, a half a brick of cream cheese, which I've softened in the microwave. So it's three ounces of cream cheese. I forgot to set that out this morning when I left, so. We're gonna put a little bit of vanilla. And you can also use lemon, imitation lemon or lemon, a little bit of lemon juice, maybe a couple tablespoons of lemon juice to really kick this lemon up. I like the vanilla buttercream with this all the lemon stuff that we're about to encounter just because it it balances it out it really it's not so lemony in your face kind of lemon it's sort of a really good balance so let's cream the cream cheese the butter <clears throat> and the vanilla together and let's get all that creamed together and I'm just gonna do it on low till it gets all together so this is all mixed together now uh, the ratio of powdered sugar really depends on how much frosting you want to make. So, and the texture of this, do you want it to, are you a cake decorator? Do you want this to be like royal icing where you can cake decorate with it? Then absolutely, that's going to determine how much powdered sugar. But for the average home cook, I would start with uh, four and a half to five cups of powdered sugar and work your way up depending on how thick and easy to spread you like it. And, you know, my husband could eat butter and cream right out of the bowl, so um, I can never make too much butter cream. And I'm just going to move this out of the way a little bit while I put the, the confectioner sugar. Now, this is pre-sifted, but you certainly could uh, if you have powdered sugar. I even make my own powdered sugar. There's a video on that on my video catalog. Powdered sugar is very easy to make. And all you do is put it in a, in a high-speed blender, you know, pure cane sugar, and it turns into powdered sugar. 
So if you're running low on powdered sugar, it's a good tip to know because you can always make it. So here's one cup. And I want to blend this a cup at a time so that it doesn't lump up and get all um, kind of lumpy. And I'm going to drizzle a little bit of whole milk. I'm just using organic whole milk. Whole milk. I'm just going to put a little drizzle. And then we're going to put this back on. If I can do it without messing up everything. And you always want to start on slow with powdered sugar, especially because it'll just fly out of here. Like it's already doing. I need to buy the cover thing for my mixer. Well, I have it completely covered. And if you try to put this on warm cake, you're going to have a really big mess because it's just going to melt. <laughs> Let's see if I can... This is cup number two. And pretty much every single time I add powdered sugar, I add a drizzle of milk. Uh, because I like this cake uh, frosting that I'm doing this particular cake for to be really smooth. I want it to be really silky and not all over the counter, sorry. And you're just gonna keep yeah, I mean, that would do cupcakes right now, but I'm going to keep adding, um, it should be this whole bag, but I'm going to keep adding powdered sugar until we get a really good consistency. mixing and as you can tell there's this big hunk that's on here if you can make peaks with your frosting you're there and this would make whether you're decorating or spreading frosting you know this beats anything you can buy in a can um, I avoid buying buying the frosting in a can I have a couple of recipes that call for that <laughs> frosting, but I've read I've read the ingredients on it and it's scary to know what's in that frosting that they sell at the store. But if you wanted chocolate frosting, all you'd need to do is add a little bit of cocoa powder in here to the consistency that you wanted. This recipe is killer. I think it's killer. Um it really does make any cake I've ever made just delicious. You just can't imagine. I really hope everybody will at least try this frosting. It's just delicious. Anyway, let's get on to the cake and get it frosted. Okay, so we're back, we'll be back over in just a minute on the cake plate. I, Sorry, I, I ha thought I had some doilies to put on here, but it looks like I don't. So what I'm going to do is put some press and seal over this and for those of you I hope everybody knows what press and seal is it's just a clear saran wrap kind of well it's kind of frosted but it sticks really well to your cake plate it's easy to clean you just rip it. and it's just the press and seal add that to the here just to keep this nice and clean because it's just 
the cake isn't going to company. It's just for Bill and I. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of frosting on this just to keep the cake from moving around. And hopefully they come out clean. I'm telling you, he loves this cake. So then I'm going to take, um, I'm using the Lucky Leaf Lemon pot Fruit Filling or Topping. And this has no high fructose corn syrup in it. Super important. And we're not going to use the whole thing. I'm just going to use a little bit. And then because I make this cake so often, I'm going to refrigerate it. It can be refrigerated up to two months in your refrigerator. And that'll give us a couple of cakes. And you can even make this ahead of time and freeze it. Works great. So we're just going to take our lemon filling and I'm just going to put a few dollops on here, spread it around. And you don't want to go too far to the edge because when we put the other layer on it, when you press down, it'll move this filling. And we don't want it all oozing out the sides. So I just really try to stay right in the middle there. And one can will make a couple of cakes. And you can use any lemon one. I like this one because it's so tart. It's so lemony. Oops, I kind of went too close. Get this off the side. the other one. Do you need me? Okay. So, so far so good. Nothing's coming out on the sides. You really don't want it oozing because we're going to put the frosting on and you do a first layer of frosting which is usually called your crumb layer and uh, I'm not going to do that. This is really not, we're not selling this cake or bringing it to anybody so it's just going to be us and but if you wanted to make this a potluck or you know something that you bless somebody with you certainly want it to be pretty. And it shouldn't really slip around on you too much. But if it does, you can put uh, wooden dowels in it to keep it, you know, sturdy. Lemon zest. Okay, I'm going to do the So, side. we're going to do some lemon zest on top of, this is really what makes this cake. Uh, <clears throat> You, if you don't have fresh lemons or frozen lemons to do this with, um, you can certainly make it without it. But this is uh, really, really makes this a tart lemon lemonade cake. So I'm just going to shave some zest on top. I'm not going to be able to get the lemon zest on the sides unless I push it in, but I think having it on top is plenty. Get our taste tester 
over here to see if he wants some lemon cake. Okay. Do you want Cool Whip? Or no? no, I'm going to have more icing. to have a bigger piece tomorrow. Oh my god. When you lift it. There. 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 Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this recipe. Hope you'll try this recipe. It's recommended, right? Very. <laughs> very recommended. <clears throat> and we'll see you guys on the next video. Don't forget, find Excellent. somebody to bless. <laughs> okay, Bill. I'm so blessed. It's not even your birthday. Not yet. But we're getting there. That's good. Okay. Always good. Okay.